Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new kind of video for this channel and today I'm going to be predicting the Premier League 20 to 21 season table. I know a lot of people have done this, obviously it's very common. I want to give it a go myself because mainly I just want to laugh at my terrible predictions in a year's time. But uh, that is what I'm going to be doing today. If you do, do go on to enjoy, make sure to comment down below. Maybe I can predict other things, like maybe I can predict the Champions League or Championship. You know, just comment down below. And also, if you do go on to enjoy, make sure to subscribe. We are so close to 100 subscribers. If you help me get there, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, let's move on. So the first prediction, I'm going to start from 20th place. And I'm going to go up to position 1. So I can like talk through it and go all the way to the top and who I think will win. So, starting off in 20th place, I'm going to go with West Brom. I personally think they're just dead meat. They haven't got enough good players to survive, I don't personally think. Obviously, they signed Pereira, which is a great signing, but I just don't feel like the quality is there anywhere else. They haven't got good enough strikers or defence. Obviously, they could still change because the chance window is still open on recording this video, but I personally think they're going to come rocks on the bottom. Next, in 19th, I'm going to go with... Brighton. Now this is a tough one, because Brighton aren't necessarily a bad team, but again I feel like West Brom, they're lacking a striker. And I know they signed Adam Milano, and that is a good sign, he's got experience, he's a good playmaker, but I just don't see enough quality there to merit Brighton staying up. I mean you're looking at a team with forwards of Murray, you're looking at Pascal Gross, not bad, Trossard again is not bad, but I just don't quite think they're going to be good enough to stay up. Now next in 18th place. I know a lot of people put Fulham to stay up. But I'm going to go with Crystal Palace. By goal difference. I'm going to go with Palace 18th and Fulham 17th. And I'm going to put mere goal difference. Like one point in between. I'm going to go like mega mega tight. Last game of the season tight. That's what I'm going to go with. And... The reason I think Crystal Palace was well, I think I saw a stat that they were like the least or they've either, either the least or the second least scoring team in the whole of the Premier League last season and you're just never going to consistently do well and stay up when you just can't score goals. I know this signed Easy or Eze or Eberichi Eze or something like that and he is a good player but again I just don't see him having enough consistency in within the team to merit them staying up this season. And as I said, 17 is going to be Fulham. Now, the reason I put Fulham ahead is because they've just got a little bit more quality I see above Crystal Palace. Because obviously Crystal Palace has got Zaha, but he's just, he hasn't performed recently. He wants to leave. I don't think I'll do any good this season either. And Fulham, they're, uh, they're not exactly much better than Crystal Palace, but I reckon they will do slightly better and finish up just on top. You've got Mitrovic, who hopefully will bang in the goals for him. You've got Tom Kearney. Uh, other young players similar and I just feel like they might just scrape it above Crystal Palace because just on the preface of that I reckon, I reckon they'll score just a few more goals like I know obviously you're looking at like I'm talking about goal difference marginal here but I'm going to go with Fulham 17th staying up and Palace down next up in 16th place I'm going to put Aston Villa I did originally have Aston Villa like 19th definitely relegated but they have just today signed um, Ollie Watkins from Brentford and that is a really really good signing in my opinion because obviously um, obviously Max he supports Brentford so I've been kind of watching Brentford as well and Watkins is a very good talented young player and he'll do very well for Aston Villa as long as they can play him right in like a formation that will suit him. Because obviously Aston Villa mainly played it so close last season, staying up by literally one point over Bournemouth. Because obviously they had Jack Grealish, who obviously is a very good player, but it was just him on his own. Like John McGinn is good, but he got injured as well, and he's not good enough to single-handedly save the team with Grealish. But I feel like Watkins is. If you got Grealish and Watkins, I feel like that'd be enough good quality for Aston Villa to merit them stay up from the drop. Now next, in 15th place, I've gone with West Ham. And it's just one of those ones where West Ham on paper have so much quality. You're thinking about Haller, Anderson, Yarmolenko, Wilshire even. It, it just got so much good quality. But it's just so poorly run. 
Like you saw in like the last few days or something, they signed that really good youngster, so they sold that really good youngster. And it just the club's just poorly run. They have so many good players that just don't perform week in, week out, like Felipe Anderson. He's just so good, but he just doesn't perform consistently. And I just feel like they'll slump to a 15th, just like they did this season. I think they were 16th or 15th. I just don't see him consistently performing well enough to merit themselves like a higher, lower mid table for the a mid-table finish like 12th, 11th, which is where they should be, maybe even higher than that. Look at the sides West, uh, West Ham is, is as a club. I just don't think I do well enough. Next up at 14th, I have placed Leeds. A lot of people, I know a lot of people have placed Leeds higher than this, looking at like 10th, 9th, and some of them made them to get relegated. So I've, I've decided to go slap in the middle, and I've put them in 14th. It's a respectable finish, they haven't done like excessively well, but they also haven't done excessively badly either. They have come to survive the drop, because they've got some good players, they've made some good signings as well. Obviously they've got naturally good players, they've got like Phillips, they've got... Bamford, if you can include in that category, and then they just strengthen their squad of players like Rodrigo, and I think they'll do they'll, they'll do well, but obviously not breathtaking. They won't be like Sheffield United or Wolves you've seen the last few seasons, but they'll comfortably stay up. Next is 13th place, and I'm going to put Burnley. And now Burnley, I'm going to go with is comfortably above Leeds. So say obviously the relegation zone is like 30 to 40 points, and then we've got like kind of Fulham, Villa, West Ham, and Leeds. They're going to be like kind of 40 to 45 maybe a little bit less and then Burnley I'm going to put like 50 or so so they're comfortably above the teams below them but they aren't quite good enough to have to take the teams ahead of them and I feel like this because obviously Burnley a few years ago obviously were very good defensively and they've just kind of dropped off recently and they're still in no position to get relegated they should not get relegated especially with Sean Dyche as a manager because he's very good and some of the players they have but they have just sold some players like Goodmanson, a key part in the team. So I reckon they won't do as well as they have in previous seasons, but they will still do pretty well. So 13th place for Burnley. Next up in 12th place, I'm going to play Sheffield United. Now, this is an interesting one because obviously Sheffield United came like 8th or 9th or something last season. They had an incredibly good season. But I don't quite see them having this season as good as they did. Obviously, it's going to be good, and a 12th is a very good finish for a team only that only got promoted two seasons ago it's still a very very good team especially when you look at some of the players they have that people wouldn't consider Premier League quality they've come through and shown they can do it you've got players like Lundstrom, Norwood, maybe even Moose and other players like Fleck as well you wouldn't quite consider them Premier League quality but they show that they've shown that last season so I reckon they'll stand up for themselves and have a respectable finish in 12. Next up, I'm going to put Southampton at number 11. Just missing out on the top 10, I'm going to put Ralph Harson Hootel's side. And the reasoning for this is because, obviously, the first half of last season, they were woeful. They couldn't get anything. They got beaten 9-0 by Leicester. But since then, since that game, they really did turn it around. And it looked like Harson was going to get sacked at one point, and he really did turn it around for the club. And now they are they, they finished comfortably in the table after the start they had. And that shows me they will do well. They'll finish almost top 10, but I don't think they quite have the consistency Consistency just to cement that place. Obviously, they got rid of Hoybjerg to Tottenham. I just don't quite think I have just enough to get in the top 10. I reckon in a season or two times, a season or two, a season, a seasons or two seasons time, they will get in the top 10. Comes to finish because they keep good players like Ings, like Ward Prowse, Redmond, other good players like that. They'll come to get there in the future. And now sneaking into number 10, into top 10, is probably my kind of like outside of bet for this season. I'm going to put Newcastle in 10th. Now my reasoning for this is because they're, they're not bad side. They really are not a bad side. Look at the transfers they've made. They have signed Callum Wilson, who's quality. He's shown it in the Premier League before. Hopefully he can do it again. And same as Ryan Fraser. He's shown it in the Premier League before and hopefully he'll do it again. They've also signed other players that I can't remember off the top of my head. And obviously they've just got the quality they already have. They've got young players that are developing. You've got players like the two Longstaff brothers. You've got some Maximin. You've got Elmeron. And I just think that they'll, they'll just do better and better. And the further up they... Uh, the further along they get in terms of years. I'm going to put them in 10th here. A bit of a shock. But you look at like a front four of Fraser, Wilson... Some Maxmen, maybe Almiron, 
and then midfield behind them you've got like Shelby, you've got Longstaff, I reckon they will actually do better than a lot of people think. Next up at number 9, this was a tough one to predict but I'm going to go with Wolves. And obviously Wolves are a team that are very good this last season and the season before, obviously they finished in like 7th and 7th again I think it was, or 8th or something like that, they did very very well. But I think they'll just drop off slightly this season. Obviously they've lost Doherty and they haven't really brought in anyone decent to replace him. Obviously he's gone to Spurs and he's a very, very good player. He's crucial in the way Wolves played. So it's a blow for them losing him. But I think they'll obviously still do well. They're still a very quality team. They've got very quality players. They signed that new forward who it looks very good. Obviously will be very good in a few seasons. But this season he won't be anywhere near as good as him and Jota Traore. And they're still a very good team as well. They've got ninth. But they haven't quite got enough squad depth to just go up. Now next up in 8th place is Man United. And they're only here because I don't really have anywhere else to put them to be honest. Man United in 8th. That's a shock for some people. They just finished 3rd or 4th. They finished one of them. But I'm looking at the defence. I can't see any way they can finish much higher than 6th or 5th. With the leaky defence they have. I mean it's a miracle they stayed up that well. They did so well last season. When you look at some of the players they have, when you, you have players like um, Fernandez, you've got Dan James and other players. I mean, like, obviously if they sign Sancho, it would be way different. But I just can't see him doing quite as well as they should. Obviously, they've got Van der Beek, he's a quality player. But I just don't see him doing as well as they should do. I mean, obviously, they very easily could finish fourth or summer this season. Now they've got the squad to do it, I just don't see them doing it. That's not. That doesn't mean they're not going to do well, because I personally think they they might very well do well. But I didn't really have anywhere else to put them, so I just took them at 8th, to be honest. Next up, in 7th, I have gone with Arsenal. And the reason I've put them just above Man United in 7th is because... The way they've played recently, I'm not just talking about the Community Shield, I'm talking about the end of the Premier League season after the Corona as well. They played really, really well. And I reckon under Arteta and the way they've been playing recently, they will do well. But again, I think it'll take them a season or two to get where they should be. I reckon they'll be fourth and fifth again, and maybe even third in a few seasons' time. Just if they keep hold of a Bamiang, Pepe, and Lacazette, and other players like that. And obviously, the defence is improving, they've got Saliba. They have got um, uh, the other defender. I completely forgot his name. Oh, I can't remember his name. But they'll do well. I reckon I'll just miss out on sixth for the OK Europa League in seventh. So I reckon I've done a little bit harsh on Arsenal, but I can't really think of anywhere else to put them. So they're seventh. I reckon they could easily do a bit better. Coming at number six is another one of my outsider bets. I've gone with Everton. Everton have made some really good signings. They signed Allen, they signed James Rodriguez, they are so close to signing Adelaide Decore as well. And they're three quality players. Just to add to that already, just think about it, they've already got Calvert Lewin, they've got Richarlison, they've got Bernard, they've got players like Dina and Holgate. And I just reckon they'll do really well this season and finish sixth. Kind of above everyone's expectations. I reckon they'll do well. So a lot of people put them like 7th and 8th, but I've gone with 6th, I just think they just have a slight edge of both Arsenal and Man City overall. While I think Arsenal, Arsenal, sorry not Man City, Man United, whilst I think Arsenal Man United will win more games, and probably play some better football, I just think Everton will have a little bit more consistency, and they won't have as many like smashings, like obviously Arsenal Man United, you can see them smashing people 6-0, and then getting smashed 4-0 themselves. I reckon Everton won't really have many of those as the other two teams, so when they may not play as well as Arsenal and Man United over the rest of the season, I reckon they will finish ahead of them. Coming in next, in number 5, I have got Leicester. Obviously, Leicester finished 5th this season, and whilst it was a very good season for them, they did drop off right at the end, and could have easily had a 3rd or 4th finish if they hadn't have messed up at the end. And obviously this season they have lost their very good left back Chilwell. So a lot of people might be thinking they might do just as bad as they continue this bad run of form. But I'm looking at a team and I'm seeing so many talented youth players that are only going to get better and better. I'm thinking they're going to easily match last season, maybe even improve it. You're looking at young players that are developing and getting better and better every day. You're looking at players like Harvey Barnes, James Madison, James Justin, uh, Amati, um... Uh, Jose Perez even and easy they're getting better every single time they play and that's why I think they will do well this season and they'll go up and get more third and fourth in the next few seasons when the players 
like uh, Harvey Barnes, Madison, they just get as good as they can be. Obviously, Splodes and Chilwell, I may have even put them in the top four if they didn't, but I still reckon I'll do well under Brendan Rodgers. Next up, in position four, you probably worked it out because the top three of most teams, of most people's predictions, is actually the same, and I've gone before is Tottenham. Now, Tottenham will do well this season, I can see, and they've signed Doherty as a good signing. And obviously, look at last season, they were missing Harry Kane, they were looking, they were missing Son, Mora, and I think Deli Ali as well, for large portions of the season through injury. Lloris as well was injured for a large portion of the season, I think so was one of the defenders. They had a lot of injuries last season, and now they've signed players like Doherty, they've signed other good players, actually it could just be Doherty. Well, you know what I mean? I reckon they'll do well, I reckon they'll come fourth, they'll cement that Champions League place, which obviously Tottenham fans will be desperate for this season, is that Champions League place, and I reckon they will get it. Now, coming into the top three, and obviously the three teams left are Man City, Chelsea, and Liverpool. Now obviously Liverpool are holding the title, Man City were second, Chelsea were third or fourth, I can never remember which where they were, I think they were fourth. So I'm going to go through each one. Uh, I'm going to go through each one in term, in time, and each one in uh, in. I'm going to go through each one. I don't know what I'm talking about, and then I'm going to wrap them at the end. So first of all, we're going to go with Chelsea. Chelsea made some very impressive signings. You're looking at Timo Werner, Kai Havertz, Ben Chilwell, Thiago Silva, Saar, Ziyech. They've made a lot of good signings, and I think they'll do very very well. This season, I can see him. Well, I mean, obviously, top three, and I'll reveal their place later on. But I can see him doing very, very well this season. And the next few seasons to come, I can definitely see him winning a title just because of how good they've enveloped their squad. And especially if they can keep hold of some of their youth players like Mount and Abraham, who are going to come through and just add to the squad depth they have already. It's going to be insane. Next, I'm going to go look at Liverpool. Now, Liverpool, obviously, they won the title last season. They've got a very good squad because they haven't lost any players. And they are looking as one of the big hitters of the Premier League, obviously, as we've seen. They've had a decent preseason. It's not been as good as it very easily could have been. But well, there's been nothing wrong about it after they beat Blackpool 7-2, which is a very impressive scoreline. And they haven't exactly brought many players in. They've brought him to Skimius, who is a good player, but he's not going to get in the first team. So it won't affect the team that much. But I just see Liverpool, I, obviously I'm a Liverpool fan, so most people would say I'm going to go first, I'm a deluded Liverpool fan, put them first. But I can just see them maybe getting a few injuries, maybe slipping off the gas. Obviously you say winning two Premier Leagues is harder than winning one, uh, and I just, I kind of agree. I reckon they might go off the gas a little bit, and then before it's too late, not quite be able to get back up to obviously first place. I'm not going to feel where I think I'll put them just yet. And finally, we've got Manchester City. Now, I reckon they'll be desperate to do something this season after the humiliation of last season. Obviously, they lost out to Liverpool in the title by like 20 points. They went out in the Champions League to Lyon after they should have easily won that tie. They'll be desperate for revenge after the humiliation they've got this season. I reckon they'll get it. They've got a good squad and developed it, developed it even more. They've got... um. The new signing, obviously the link with Koulibaly would be a very good chance if they can get a hold of him. And I just think they will do well this season. And if they don't, in the Premier League, they'll at least do well in the Champions League, which is obviously what Pep is very, very wanting. That didn't make any sense, did it? It's what Pep is very, very eager to get. Alright, now what you're waiting for is how I rank the top three. So coming in at third, I'm actually going to put Liverpool. Now before I say anything, I'm going to say... In my prediction, these top three are very, very tight. I'm talking like five or six points separating these top three. And like points maybe like 84, 83 and 81 or something like that. Something very, very tight. And third, I'm going to go with Liverpool. Like I said, I'm just going to st step off the gas oh so slightly. Not be quite as good as they probably should be. But obviously they're still going to get a very, very good points total this season. Do very, very well. And now really, now really miss out on second and first. And I reckon I'll win the league again within the next few seasons. But I just don't think it'll be this season. Like maybe in like a season or two's time, I can see him winning the season, uh, w winning the Premier League again. I just don't quite think it'll be this season. So with that being said, I put them third and second. I'm going to put Chelsea. I think Chelsea will be so so close to the title in this first season. They won't quite get it. They miss out on just a few points. But that does mean I'm also 
going to say that they are going to win the title in the next few seasons with Liverpool. Obviously, you probably worked out City are going to win the title this season according to my prediction. But I reckon in the next few seasons, it will definitely be Chelsea and Liverpool a numerous amount of times. Maybe if we're going to say, going to 2030, I can see Chelsea and Liverpool winning about four Premier Leagues between them. I honestly can. And they'll have a very good season. They'll do well in the Champions League. Are they in the Champions League? Yeah, they're in the Champions League. They'll do very well in the Champions League. Very well in the Premier League. A good season for Frank Lampard. And I reckon they'll win the Premier League very, very soon. I find that brings us on to Man City. I could just see them having just enough momentum to go and get the Premier League away from Chelsea and Liverpool's graphs. who will be so close behind them. But I can see Pep doing the job for City narrowly. Obviously, you look at City. They haven't brought in much depth yet. But obviously, they're linked with Koulibaly. And also signed that new player. I've completely forgotten his name. But they obviously have incredible squad depth already. Obviously, they did lose David Silva due to, well, him leaving. But you're already looking at so many amazing players. Like, Foden's just going to replace David Silva immediately, and he's already world class at like 20. He's not even 20, he's like 19. I don't even know how old he is. But obviously, there's so much depth and such a good squad. I just think that they will edge it out to both Chelsea and Liverpool this season. But I reckon it'll be the only one for the next few years. And in the next few years, it'll be ruled by Chelsea and Liverpool. I just think City will go on this year. So that is it all for my predictions. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Like the video. Comment down below if you want more predictions. And also comment your prediction. I want to know what you are predicting for this season. Now, I hope you did go on to enjoy. See ya.